uh, word from the cops uh, into the sociological department. Uh, they've been working on me. My, my colleagues who are sociologists, and they're, they've started me believing that uh, there is some truth in numbers. But just for a, a little perspective, um, Iceland is there, nicely situated in the, uh, in the uh, top right corner up there. And uh, this is the place. Um, we're pretty big. I, I think we're the same size, roughly the same size as uh, Kentucky. So uh, we're not a very small country uh, in square kilometers or miles, but we have very few people living there. Uh, we have around 320,000 people living in the country. And where you see the uh, red dot, that's where the capital is. And we have about 200,000 people living there. So you could say that, that in that area and very close to it, you have at least two thirds of the population. So that's the, uh, that's the place where we police and that's um, our neighborhood. Uh, just to give you a little bit of, of uh, history also, uh, we have a federal police system. All police is run by the government. We have nine police districts and we have a whopping number of 600 police officers in the country. 600 police officers in the country. So we're a very, very small profession. Uh, and then just a few minor things. We don't have any military. There's no military in Iceland and the police is not armed. Yet, I think we have, I think we're ranked in number 15 in, in, uh, in uh, numbers of, of uh, guns per capita. But we, for some reason, we just don't have, a, have much, much of a history of, of uh, killing people with, with guns. So, so that helps out the police. I think we can all agree on that. Well, when the going gets tough, and I, that's, I, I think that's kind of the, 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 the thing I want to talk to you about today is, um, is what happened was for us in 2007, we had three police forces. We had much more than nine police districts in the country. I think we we're at 17 at that point. And we had three police forces that were joined into one police. So when I was growing up in the police um, in the year 2000, when I started, we had three police forces working in the same area. So if you were to, to drive uh, in, in any direction for more than five minutes, you were bound to go through at least uh, two, two or three police districts. It didn't cause a lot of problems seeing that it's all federal police. There are no, no jurisdictions to speak of and all that, but it created a lot of other problems. So what happened was the three police forces were uh, put together. But then, of course, uh, we were hit very, very badly with the economic collapse in 2009. So we had huge budget cuts and have had since 2007, essentially, because the budget cuts essentially started before that. So we have had a total of 20% uh, budget cuts since 2007. We have gone from 437 yearly jobs to 363 in our total numbers. And we had 347 police officers working in the, in the Reykjavik metropolitan uh, area in 2007, whereas we have 296 of them right now. So as I told you earlier, we have about two thirds of the population and even more at times, uh, but we have half of the police officers in the country for, working for us. So, Ultimately, what we have had to do and what many police forces all over the world have had to do, we have had to do more with a lot less. So when the going gets tough, the tough get on Facebook and that's, that's what we did. Um, so in 2010, we opened up our, our Facebook and, uh, and Twitter site and when we look at it today, because I was, I was telling you, there was a lot of anxiety and the, and the majority of, of the police force just said, no, 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 that's, that's not going to work. We're, we're, this is going to be a major catastrophe. But if I can remember it correctly, I think we had 2,870 something individuals that liked our page in the first 24 hours. So we got off to a flying start, I think. And I think it just 
in the days following the, the, the startup of the, um, of the uh, Facebook site, I think we were pretty, pretty sure that we had uh, stumbled onto something that uh, could work for us. But nostalgic. Uh, this is Facebook in, I think, I couldn't find 2010. I think this is early 2011. So it's about a few months after we started. I can uh, remember, we have 7,000 subscribers at that point. And I, I kind of like this. I, I, I always like it when people say, you can't change Facebook. We have to keep it the way it is, but I, I don't think we'd like to use it as, as it was that, at that time. That's 2011. So time, of course, goes by. In 2012, we open up our Instagram site, uh, which was very, very low key to begin with. We open up a YouTube site, at least to have it operational and, and up there. And majority of, of this was, well, let's at least pick up the usernames. So we have our usernames on all of these, and nobody picks them up. And that's, that's kind of what I like. People don't seem to try to grab our username when something picks up. They kind of want to leave it for us for some reason. And then Google Plus and, and, uh, and Flickr. And then, of course, time goes on and on and on. So 2014, we open up our Pinterest site, uh, which I, I can probably tell you about. At, uh, I, I probably need a, 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 a whole 60 minutes for that, that thing alone. And we also do email. This is, I know, this is, this is kind of going backwards. But that is kind of the, the mentality of what I'm going to tell you is that the reason why we pick up email and put that into our social media unit is because we were, we were not getting anything out of email. It was kind of dying out and we weren't providing a lot of good service using that. But we wanted to implement and we wanted to try out because they're very, very close together and we wanted to use the, the lessons learned on, on social media and, and to use that on email. And that's what I'm going to, uh, to uh, go better into a little bit later. So now we're at what is very important, and this is today. So where are we today? Well, the, the big thing is that we have a growing number of subscribers. Uh, all of our uh, channels are growing, and they're, they're growing relatively steadily. And we can say that Facebook has about 72,000 plus subscribers today. Uh, Instagram has around 160,000 subscribers. And I, I am not sure how that happened. 160,000 subscribers on Instagram is, is, uh, is pretty uh, big. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but I think it's, it probably leaves us as the biggest police entity on, on Instagram today. Uh, what happened there was, uh, our Instagram site was picked up by a Russian blogger. How many good stories start with that line? <laughs> it all started when a Russian blogger picked up. So our Instagram site was picked up by a Russian blogger. It gets picked up by another Russian blogger. Uh, things start moving and then all of a sudden we're all over German media. First it's Russian bloggers, then it's German media. And it kind of just takes off. And I think, it's, I think it's very nice and kind of goes to show as, as, uh, to, the, to the quality of, of the stuff that's going on there. Of course, I, I don't do any of it. I, I have such a boring job staying indoors that uh, I have uh, excellent police officers who, who do that. But it just kind of took off and has been growing ever since. So it's, it's, uh, it's gotten to be very big. Uh, Twitter really hasn't taken off until last year in Iceland. So we, we have about 10,700, I, I think, um, subscribers uh, last week. What is very, very important, and I'm not gonna show you a graph of this, but what is very important, especially when we look at our Facebook site, is that we're looking very closely at uh, the gender and age distribution. Because um, from our perspective, I think social media gives us an opportunity to contact and be in, in, in a relationship with people that you have a very hard time reaching by other means. So having a very strong age distribution towards the younger end, and especially having an equal distribution between men and women is, is very important. That has been changing for us in the last years. There's a definite change from 2012 when it was very, very uh, close. We had almost 50-50 uh, men-women uh, distribution. 
and then uh, it has been cha changing since then. It's, I think it's more towards uh, 55, 45 today. But, uh, but still, our, our strongest age groups are between 18 and 34. And that's exactly the age group that we want to uh, get our message across to. Then, of course, private messages. And that is, that is I think, private messages to both uh, probably Twitter, which is something we, we don't use to, that, to the same extent, but private messages are probably the biggest reason why it really took off. And when we started looking at uh, when we've had the biggest accumulation of users, that started in May of 2012, which was the, the or April 2012, which was the same time as they started having uh, private messages on Facebook. So the way I see it, and I think this is something that we, we will want to uh, uh, look into further, is that we see it as, as, uh, as soon as people really got the, the opportunity to speak, us, speak to us on a private level, I think that's when the, the, um, the, the, the methods really, really took off. Uh, this horrible graph here, which is, is the first one I'm going to, uh, to show you because it's definitely the worst one to interpret. This shows the, the, um, the accumulation of, of private messages through Facebook. And I don't know if you uh, see this, but all the, uh, the previous months, they're all essentially we're growing and every month we're getting more and more private messages up until July of this year, which is I think almost the first month where we get fewer messages than we got in the same time last year. But then again, we had a very, very big part of private messages come in uh, in July, August and September of last year. Uh, which is probably due to a number of things. There was, uh, we, we, we had a, there, was a, there was a lot of things going on with the police. And when the police is, is, uh, is, has a big presence on regular media, we can see it kind of go on to, and we get more stuff coming in through uh, our social media channels. But you can see there that a very typical month is, is uh, delivering us about 300 to about on very, very big occasions, 400 plus private messages a month. And these are absolutely everything. They are uh, people complaining about noisy neighbors, um, up to children reporting uh, abuse in their homes. Uh, they're almost everything. But 2014, we started, uh, we took over the email, and that is a part of what we've been very, very uh, happy with, is that ever since we took on, uh, put the email uh, under the same hat as the, uh, the, the, the other social media, email has been flowing in, so we're getting a lot more email than we used to get before, and I think this is due to a number of reasons. I think it's due to a reason why, why um, because we're providing better service. Why are we providing better service? It's because we usually have uh, police officers who take care of all the, all the uh, incoming things. Through, and this has been done through all our social media channels at all times. So people always get a response. They're always responded to. They always get an answer. And, they, uh, and we're trying to cut back the number of emails that are being forwarded to our staff. And I, I think this is also something which is, um, which is something I'll, I'll talk to a little bit about later, but, but we're getting, all of our staff is getting bombarded with phone calls and emails and all this stuff which is, is coming on. And we're asking people to send, a, a send us all that stuff. And so it's kind of hard saying, well, no, I can't respond to it. But that's why I think it's very, very important that we have someone who has a, a great deal of understanding of how the system works, how the police works, and how the real world, real world works, that can actually give people good responses and can take care of what they're being sent in. And I think that, that, that in, by doing that, uh, I think today we're only forwarding about 75% of our emails that are coming in. Everything else is being responded to by the people who are, uh, that are assigned to the to the responding. But then when we look at our private messages and our uh, emails that are coming in, you can see that it is on a steady slope upwards. 
uh, and we're getting more and more messages. And why is this important? It is important because policing is a knowledge run uh, company. We need knowledge to be able to police. And the more knowledge we have, the better, or at least that's, that's my understanding of things. So now we've gone on to just the, the, the basic metrics uh, of, of what we're go getting in and the numbers we have and all that. And why is this important? Um, it, is it is important because we want to be able to contact with our, our people. We want to be able to uh, join in the conversation with, the, with our public. So today we run uh, polls that are run every year where we look at how is the police doing? How is our services going? Are people happy with the services that we're providing? And there we ask people, how do you talk to the police? How do you, how do you stay in contact? And what we see is that 53.6% of the people we talk to follow police on social media today. So we're seeing that a little bit more than half of our population follows us on social media, which is very, very good for us. We can see that 98% of those do that through Facebook. 96 is a little, little less than, than the year before. And then about 20% on Instagram this year, and then 8.1% on Twitter. So we can see there that that a lot of people, and probably most of them, follow us on, on, uh, on uh, all, very few follow us on all media, but most of us follow us on Facebook. And also, we look at how do people contact the police. I kind of have to remind myself that we started this project in 2010. And now we see, and we have yet to get the, the figures for this year, and I'm very sorry for that, but last year, we see that 50% of the people who do contact the police do so through social media. So that means that social media is the biggest pipeline in and out of the police in Iceland, or, or at least the, the, the metropolitan area today. This is bigger than any other media. So it's more than telephone, 112, email, homepage, or meeting a police officer. So that is where we're at today. But why does it work? And I think that this is where we get the answer, because when we check how, how satisfied people are with the service, and I always think this is a little bit strange because, I mean, a few years back, if we would ask how satisfied are you with the, uh, the service of the police, uh, a lot of people will just respond, well, I, I certainly got the ticket they issued, but, uh, but I wasn't very satisfied with it. But we can see that nine, over 90% of the people are very satisfied with the use of the social media channels. And that goes also with 112. But what we're working on now, of course, is the other, and especially the email, uh, which has got to be a whole of a lot bigger than it was. But still, we see that only half of the, the people are very satisfied with uh, using that. But now we've probably gone towards the, the, the most important thing, and that is trust towards the police. And the reason why this is kind of the, my, my biggest point is that we've had to face huge budget cuts. We have less police officers working out there. We're uh, in some cases, you might think that we're providing less service than we're used to, but still you can see that, uh, and this is of course very small and in Icelandic, but I still thought it was very important because at the top there, the most trusted entity in Iceland is the Coast Guard, and the second most trusted entity in Iceland is the police. So this year's poll says that 77% of the population trust the police to a very high degree. And I think in order to do our job, this is probably the most important thing we can have, and especially being uh, a, police, uh, a police that relies very heavily on, on uh, assistance from uh, people, our, our uh, public. 
But what we also do is we run similar polls and our newest poll says that 85% of the people trust the police to a very, very high degree. And I think it's very, very unreasonable comp to compare ourselves to the Coast Guard because they never ever do anything negative and they have helicopters so and big ships. So I think it's a very, very, it's not an, uh, it's not an even contest, but uh, we're certainly in it. Then when we look at uh, trust in the last few years, uh, this is what we see. So any, almost all other entities are, have gone greatly down in trust, especially after the banking collapse. But for some reason, the police has stayed up there. And this is what we're very, very, very proud of. I think it's very important. So this brings us to the future. And I think when we look back, I think the most important thing we can do is we can't stop. We have to, uh, we have to move forward. And we have to learn how to use other social media and the way that we have been doing and implement it in new ways. And we can do that by using the methods learned and we can use it, use the way that we've been running social media to do other stuff and not only social media. We can do it with email and we can do it with, with all other, other places. But most importantly, I think we, we, we will have to do it on other social media. Uh, and one of, my, one of the things that, uh, that uh, I've been looking at is, uh, is Snapchat, uh, which is very, very popular in Iceland. And we've been trying that out for a, a little bit also. But, what we'll try to do now is I think we'll start to overtake other media. First of all, we're looking now at our call center. Uh, and that's what we'll try to do with uh, similar what we did to our, our email. So we can start taking care of more stuff within the call center. So we can start having people there who can respond to people's uh, inquiries and try to forward as, as little as we possibly can but yet provide good service and, and, uh, and take care of things for people. And this also goes for the police website. And here you can see our very, very new police website. Uh, but unfortunately, we, didn't, we don't have the funds now to make it really, really web 2.0. And that is, that is uh, the, I think, the, the biggest thing we need to fix today is that uh, the website is very, very um, web 1.0, whereas you have very little connectivity, you have very little things going backwards and forwards. It's just publishing, old time police publishing. And what we want to do now is we want to add all the stuff to the website. We want to add all the forms that people can fill out online and take care of, like lost and found, stolen lost bicycles, minor car collisions, uh, stolen, lost cell phones, minor vandalism, and property damage. And this is service that I think it's very well put on uh, online so people can take care of themselves. Uh, because self-service, people want to help themselves. They want to take care of their stuff uh, by themselves. And they really, really don't want to call the, the, uh, the, the, the number. They don't want to wait, wait while somebody is figuring out and patching them all through the building and, and uh, to find something out. And also to make an appointment, because we're still at a point where people have to show up to file a report. They still have to show up. They still have to wait for the uh, detective to show up. And just to have a, uh, an appointment system where you can uh, go online, you can find a, uh, uh, an appointment where you can show up, and you don't have to wait for half an hour or two hours or three hours on, on what, uh, whatever happens. But why, why has this been, been happening? And I, I think it's, Iceland is, is, uh, is not all that far from other countries in, in many respects, but we do have a very, very high penetration of, of broadband media. And we usually have people who are very, very committed to trying out new things. I have no idea why that is, but people in Iceland are very, very susceptible to, to new things that makes them, uh, very, very good candidates for people to sell all sorts of stuff. Uh, many, many homes had uh, rainbow vacuum cleaners and, and foot massagers and all sorts of stuff which people just fell for. And that's why I think uh, social media kind of got adapted very, very quickly. And 
it's not only high internet penetration. We have, I think we have 98% uh, broadband, uh, high-speed broadband internet penetration. Uh, but we have about 230,000 uh, Facebook accounts in the country today. And I think that's pretty, pretty big, remembering we have uh, 320,000 people. But the, the, the way that we've been living has been changing to a very, very big degree. And I think we're having more and more people who are spending less and less time on the streets. They're spending more and more time in front of their computers. And if, if we see, we, we can see that the playgrounds are, are mostly vacant today. We see the kids indoors, they're playing together. They're playing together even though they don't have, uh, they're not in the same room. My son plays Minecraft and, and I heard him speaking English the other day when he was uh, playing a, a zombie game on, on his uh, PlayStation. So the, the way that we've been uh, communicating and spending our lives has been changing. And I think it's very, very important that the police keep up because we're, if we're not there, somebody is going to take our place and he's going to do it for us and probably not the way that we want it to be done. And I, I think we can kind of think that to, to man one police car, for 24 seven, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all, all days of the year. I think we, you, we have to have two police, people in one police car. And that means 13 to 14 people on a yearly basis. So it's very, very, very expensive to add police cars and have more police cars. Of course we want better service, but if we're talking about police presence and the feeling of security and the feeling that the, the police is there. Is there actually a better way of doing it, even if it costs less and is, is, uh, is better for us? But there's also other things, when, and that comes down to efficiency. And that's what I, I was saying earlier, is that we're getting bombarded with all sorts of information. And if we can remember now, uh, we, when we were growing up and when I was growing up, you have to go to the library, you had to go somewhere to find information, but our kids are being bombarded with information and they have to do all that stuff. They, they don't have to, to look for it. They, it's just coming to them and they ha their problem is to sift out what is important. And this is what is happening also with our daily lives. We're always, we're receiving calls. We're receiving calls everywhere we are. We never get um, uh, any time where we're left alone. And I think it's very important that the, the institutions um, help the, uh, the staff to sift out what is coming in so they're not being uh, torn from one project to the other, which makes it very inefficient. And also, we like to have better control of our time because a lot of the information that is being co that, that comes in through telephone, you have to take care of right away. Whereas as it comes through social media or email or any other uh, digital uh, way, you, a lot of the times you have a better uh, control of when you take care of it. So we can kind of even out our uh, peaks by controlling our time a little bit better. What was I gonna say about information? I have no idea. But it's probably the, 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 what I was saying earlier, that the, the police is an information-run society, and the more information we have, it's the, uh, the better. But just to, uh, because we're talking about digital playgrounds and we're talk, talking about the, the digital lives and when, where we're spending our time, I wanted to give you two very, very good examples of police officers who are using social media on a scale that I haven't seen or, or in a way that I haven't seen uh, done in, in North America. I might be very mistaken, but this is uh, a trend that we see. Um, I'm going to show you one in Finland and then one in, um, in uh, Estonia. And then I have a few other examples if, if anybody's interested. And I'll probably, I can put these, uh, I'll, I'll tweet these, uh, these uh, URLs so you, can, uh, so you can take a look at them a little bit later on. But the first one is uh, Pekka Laitinen, who is a um, larger than life character. He's like little John from, uh, from Robin Hood. He's two meters tall, has a very, very strong presence, and he talks very, very slowly, like all kids. 
And uh, what they've been doing in Finland is they've been using more and more web constables. So they've been uh, asking their constables to have a presence under their name, under their own identity, on uh, and run a Facebook site to contact the police or uh, the public. Sorry. And what I lo love about Pekka is that uh, he writes almost everything in English also. So I, I, I really urge you to, uh, to send him a, uh, a request. And he will probably, if we all do that now, he'll probably be very, very surprised why he gets a lot of people at the same time all from another continent. But this is, this is the reason why I'm showing you this is because I kind of like the idea that he doesn't have to have a police car to police. So he can use more ways than one in spreading out his, his presence as a police officer. And that is why I think our Instagram site was, uh, was uh, mildly successful, is they didn't need a police car. Actually, they were bicycle police officers. But by using social media, they could essentially uh, multiply their presence by to all the people that didn't see them live, that could see them online or digitally. This is a, uh, an Estonian colleague of ours who is uh, Maria Punak, and she is um, also a web constable and works for the Estonian police. Uh, she doesn't write a lot in uh, English, but, uh, but what she writes is very, very nice, and, uh, and it's also a very good opportunity to learn Estonian. Uh, and they're doing very, very interesting stuff over there, too. And uh, I think that's almost reaching the, the end of uh, my presentation now. Um, but uh, kind of what I wanted to say is that I think, it's, I, I think we've gone through a lot of change within in the, uh, the Reykjavik Metropolitan Police. And we reached the point where we're seeing more and more people uh, coming on board and they're saying, well, social media can't work. We have a lot of instances where we, we can uh, use it to catch criminals and we can get information very quickly out. And, and uh, even we've, we've replaced uh, 911 for, uh, for a few moments when 911 went out. So it's, it's a multi-use multi tool. But I think it's very, very useful when it comes to the greater picture and seeing how important it is to have our faces out there to establish that connection and, uh, and stay in contact with the people that are paying, paying our salaries. And we can do that in so many more ways than one. You can have independent police officers working uh, on, under their own identities. You can have big pages like we run. Uh, you can have Instagram sites or Periscopes or Snapchats or whatever it's, whatever it's called. But it's a little bit about creativity. And a lot of it is about taking the brakes off of our creative people who want to try out stuff, trusting them and saying, well, you can actually do that. You can do that. And you can do that in new ways uh, and, and try out and see how it works for you. But uh, are there any, any uh, questions that uh, I could uh, possibly answer for you guys? Too many graphs, huh? No. <laughs> Please? Um, our Instagram site, the, the, both sites are, I'm hugely proud of them and, and, uh, and they're, they're a lot of fun. Uh, our Instagram site started uh, where we had two young police officers who were going on a seminar to the U.S. for bi bicycle policing. And we asked them to run the Instagram site and then later we've added on people. But essentially it's run by a group of bi bicycle police officers who, of course, we're, we're stuck in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, so they, they don't work uh, 12 hours, of, uh, sorry, 12 months a, a year. Uh, it's definitely not Florida. Uh, shorts are not a part of our uniform, I can tell you. But uh, what, what, what the, only, the only thing we asked them was, show what you think is important, and that's what they've done. So um, I'll tweet also the, the URL of our Instagram account, but all of our accounts start uh, end with Lodeglan, which is 
which is uh, police in Icelandic. And I'm not going to try to spell that out. I'll, I'll put it on my Twitter. Uh, so the Instagram account is kind of, it's just everything that they think is important. It is everything from fun pictures of, of police officers uh, eating donuts, petting kittens, uh, eating candy floss, uh, shutting down um, legal bed and breakfasts is almost everything. Um, our Pinterest site is very, very different. It is uh, tailored to a much narrower audience. Uh, our Pinterest site is used for um, putting all of our lost and found. So everything that is lost and found, and we're, we're actually running on a law which was set in, I think, 1800 something by the Danish king. Uh, we haven't had a Danish king since 1944, but uh, it's still in place. So we have to take care of all lost and found and every item of lost and found which is uh, taken care of by us is posted on our uh, Pinterest site. We think it's a very, very cheap and good way of, of uh, getting, getting that information across. I was just wondering how you guys use Snapchat. Well, we have had one uh, police officer who, who is very, uh, very out there and, and a very outspoken person and a, and a great uh, and, a, uh, and, a, and a great face for the police. And he has been using Snapchat on kind of his own account. Uh, and it's very much of a personal account of his. We do have the, the username for the, uh, for the police Snapchat, but uh, we don't run it to any extent. But I would like to have the opportunity to do more with it because I, I think it's a very, very good medium in many ways. But there are other aspects which I'm a little bit afraid of, such as we need to store what comes in. And we kind of, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit, maybe it's the age, you know. <laughs> I'm a little bit afraid. We had a question over there. Since you receive so many private messages, do you have someone monitoring this 24 seven? So when emergency or um, messages that come in that need urgent response, you're able to handle this? That's a very good question. No, unfortunately, we're not at that place uh, yet. So and that, that's kind of the, the, the downside to what we're doing is um, you're, you're poking holes in my stuff already. I'm very happy that you did that uh, because that's very important. No, because what we'll sometimes have to tell people is call the police. And I hate, I hate being in a uniform telling people, no, you have to call the police because we are the police and we should be able to take in all calls. But now we have to get all, all calls for assistance. We have to get that through uh, 112, which is our formal line in. So 112 is for everything. If you need police assistance, you have to call 112. Um, but one of the things that we are working on currently, and I hope that that will work out sooner rather than later, is having monitoring within the um, dispatch, uh, the police dispatch that we are running. Uh, there's a number of reasons why it hasn't happened already, but I, I think that's one of the very important things. And that also comes to controlling our time, because I, I think that you can spend less time uh, responding to something online and, and kind of following it out and, and, and putting it in place rather than having to answer the, the telephone call. And that means that one of our dispatchers is, is busy. He can't take anything else. So I think we can kind of even out the flow by using social media for the uh, police dispatch. That's one of the projects we're working on today. We have more questions, one in the back there. So what was the one image or was it more than that uh, got picked up by the Russian blogger? Sorry? I'm not sure if this is working. Um, I'm not sure if it was one image, but uh, it was, uh, I, there was a number of images and I would be lying if I didn't say some of them included candy floss, uh, at least one kitten. There might have been a puppy, but uh, yeah. So they're, but they're, they're very, uh, I kind of, I, I, I urge you to check out the website. If you go on to Instagram.com slash um, there's, there's a lot of very, very nice pictures there. And one of the, one of the nicest things that we, we of course figured out was it was one more way of us getting uh, stuff to put in all of our reports and all of our websites. So we can, 
We, of course, cross post, and I think that's, that's also something that uh, people should pay attention to is, is sometimes it works very well to post something on YouTube, but it doesn't get a lot of kind of hits unless you put it on uh, Facebook too. So having, having your stuff on multiple accounts, I think, is very, very important. But uh, there wasn't one particular thing that, that got posted there, but there's, a, there's kind of an array of, of uh, pictures. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, guys. Great being with you.